once we are done with that. So the question here with me is, what is the difference between adjustment and compromise? Adjustment and compromise. It's a very good question. So, there are two aspects at least I can right now think of. Adjustment is from within, where I'm happy with doing it harmoniously with understanding. First adjustment comes within and then without, outside. And adjustment is with the situations or with the persons where we are differing in our views or modes, but not with my values or what ought to be done. I'll give you an example. Suppose I have my staff and they want that surgery should be, one of my staff is doing night duty at other clinic. So he wants that I'll come a little later eight. I want to start the surgery early. So I adjust a little bit with his comforts, but I can never compromise with the quality of the surgery or the patient. So I think this is one principal difference that we are adjusting to see. Somebody will like that, okay, we'll do this much and not further. Okay, fine. As long as it is not hurting anybody, as long as it is not interfering with what I should have been doing as a part of my duty, I was, I'll be always ready to adjust. Because it's with the viewpoints, with the beliefs, with the situations I'm adjusting. And happily from within that, okay, everybody can be right. And ultimately, whatever is to be done is, in the, is not going to go out of the nature scheme. But compromise is a situation where I'm not happy at the heart. I'm using the word happy at the heart. And usually I'm not happy at the heart where something like values or what I need to do as part of my duty gets compromised. So there, and it's with a heavy heart or with, with unhappy situation. So there I will not like to sort of uh, leave my duty-based part, I would say, or value-based part. And some or other way, if they are not uh, ready, I, I may find out some other way to do it. I may try to avoid confrontation, but at the same time I may try to avoid to have my way of working through. I hope you get me. So this is. Then second question is, uh, how do you adjust to something that is wrong, especially with someone that you care? That's a very good question. Well, adjustment doesn't tell you that you have to say everything is right. So I know that this should be, let me come to a very real life situation, questions. Here so many parents tell us that our sons, son or daughter in daughter or some some somebody. Either they are entangled in some wrong path or some bad habits or some other thing, drinks maybe it can be anything. Which as a parent naturally nobody really likes or loves it. So what should I do? Do I allow that? No, never. I should do my all effort to if I can correct it. So what can I do? If the child is small, we can be split. But with a grown-up person, 20, 25 years or more age, your son, you cannot be strict, in this, especially in this country. But you can certainly try to show, see, look, this is what I believe. This, But here, what is most important is, I think, rather than forcing do's and don'ts, if we can try to put the scientific explanatory aspects of the things case by doing this, it will end up into this, these are the inner state of beings, by doing this, this will happen, by doing this, this will, this will happen. And if we can change the inner opinion of the person, see what the holistic scientists used to do, suppose somebody comes who is, some, who is in some bad habit, he will, will ask him, do you like it? No, no, I don't like it, but what can I do? It occurs. I can restrain myself. Okay. If you agree that you, it's not good, do at least this much, do this prayer, that, oh Lord, or oh Supreme Himself, I beg pardon for these wrong things which are occurring out of me, and please give me energy so that I can get free of it. If his heart's opinion is changed, your job is done. You may not have all the behavior right now. But what happens in routine behavior, routine worldly dealings? We, we are so much annoyed or well disturbed. We cannot handle ourselves, so we show our disturbance, and you are not doing good and whatever. Now his ego, 
even though wanting this thing, rebels it, or just he is not able to do it. So what says, okay, who cares? Or I also don't care. Or, just there is a breakup. So with all the love, keeping your love intact, I would say from within, you try to dispose your duties. And the most important part of disposing duty is if you can make him understand that in which way this is not good or this is harmful scientifically. And if you can understand this much and at least starts within, then I think the job is done. I hope you understand me. Because behavior is in nobody's hand. Immediately the person may not be able to change the behavior. But opinion can be readily changed. And if from within he starts asking for inner energy or apologizing, then someday improvement will come. Second thing, we start to hate the people rather than hating the bad habit. But the entire person becomes useless for us, not that particular part. And the person may have so many other good qualities. I have seen so many people who are in the habit of drinking, otherwise they are very good at heart. So rather than trying to correct that particular disease or part, I throw away the entire patient, something like that, or please don't come to me. So these are some intricacies, but the most important part is when some, some, of, some of my dear and dear is involved, I am not able to handle my inner situation. I am not able to tell no for myself what should be done. So I think these are the two things that I'll know. I'll sympathize with him that, oh, he has fallen prey to this weakness. And would you sympathize on a weak person or would you be harsh on a weak person? From within I'm talking. So once I'm clear from within that, okay, he's relating to your pure self and this is his weakness, if I can try to help him, but in a different way. So I'll be friendly with him, I'll try to explain him, and if I can change his opinion from within, at the same time showing that, well, I, 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 I'm, I'm feeling pain, not because of you, but because of some mistake of mine that it has come to you. So something like that, I think we can try to correct it. And uh, so many times it gets corrected. Good company is very, very important in that, rather than direct, directly trying to implement the things. If we can see that he gets into some good company, some inspirational company, then probably the thing may change out. But what is most, most important is to change within. So Dalaji used to say that suppose a thief comes to me, I would never see him with a vision that he is guilty or something. Though I will explain everything, that if you, do you like uh, stealing? So no, but I don't know any other job. And this is for my family. But don't you have a fear that you will be caught up? Yes. Then. Would you like to get something out of it? Yeah. So at least do from within that all supreme self. If I can find some other better business and if I can uh, get refrained from this, I apologize for my mistakes and please give me energy so I can refrain that. So there are so many aspects. See, why the people get into such uh, weakness, caught up by weaknesses is because they do not have inside real happiness or stability which can keep them stable amongst distracting conditions. And so many times they are hurt by not finding love or some other things, whatever. So on one side we try to, rather than pushing that away, we try to keep them engaged in positive side, by which they will enjoy, they will have the good uh, uh, happiness and something. So he himself will be able to differentiate that this is good over that. So this is one way of looking the things. He has to realize that something better is there for him. Something more superior is there which is available to him which is better for him. And change his inner opinion. At the same time keep on praying, keep on trying friendly. But what happens if he or she knows that our heart is broken and we are annoyed and we are hatred, then that runs away from us and then our words do not have any impact on that. So I think uh, does that answer your question? And this is a very great challenge in this country, at least I am seeing it so many places with so many parents, unfortunately. In India also it may happen, but here it, the magnitude is very, very high. So this is what we can think. Okay? How do you separate I and mine? Partly I have answered, partly I can answer later on. So that was all about the questions which I had. If everybody wishes, then we can have 10 or 15 minutes of uh, experiment. 
Rajini Bhai was telling me that give a few more examples of what happens. So I'll give some few more examples. Suppose at one time me and my brother, even though we both at heart, we were not getting along well. Whatever I tried to do good for him, he was misunderstanding it. And there was some or other thing going on. So thanks to holistic inner science, that at least I could keep myself stable. And I went on doing confession, apology, resolution from my side not looking at whatever. Sometimes it was becoming sort of unbearable also from within. But immediately the holistic inner science vision will come to my rescue that no, this is separate, I am separate. And within few months everything became very fine, 180 degree opposite. Now we are so good friends that nobody can break us apart. Hmm. So similarly there are so many situations. Just three days back I was at San Antonio and one lady was sharing her experience with me. When she was young with two kids, her husband over here, San Antonio, sent him to India and was not calling him. Now you can imagine young lady with, with two young kids. So when the husband was not having the introduction to holistic science as yet, luckily the wife got introduced to holistic science at Baroda. So she narrated the difficulty to the persons over there who guided that do these nine codes and prayers and give this confession, apology and resolution process. She went in a room, three days continuously she went on doing it very heartily. She will just stand up for basic necessities, food or other things, sit back. On the fourth day she said the phone came from this side and they are happy at the moment. So it changed from within three days and she was so perturbed at the moment that with two young kids, if the husband is not calling. But the holistic scientists explain that you have to stay with her, you, you don't dis get this stuff. Do start doing the confession, apology, resolution. It just get got resolved. So there are so many examples. Rajibai says if, if, if it would have not have been there, what would have happened? Both sides will have so many anomalies, animosity and revenges and other things going on throughout the life. And not only it would have spoiled their life throughout here, but it would have invited a lot of new karmas also by way of inner state of disturbed state of beings, which will come to in the presentation, right? I hope that answers or clears the situation. Please. Uh, on that, this example you have given, um, is it not better for her to think uh, going back one? Because only a relative, uh, uh, you know, if she has. Um, separated person from the real self and the relative thing, that would have given her, don't you think, that would have given her more peace rather than depending on the husband to call her because it can be only momentary, right? Like the husband can change any time. And here she is putting her faith on something, um, maybe on the holistic science or whatever, like, rather than realizing what is the truth, right? To give her she more strength and they the life. I agree. She did that. She, on one hand, she was trying to be remaining as an pure soul self. But there is a way of her relative interconnected living and two young kids and everything. So you need to resolve that also. Right? There are both aspects. So on one hand, she was sick. She was trying to remain as the pure self. But as I said, you can't be only as a pure soul. You have to look to your relative aspect of living. And why it happened? Because there was some karmic ties which I need to resolve from my side at least. If despite doing everything it would not have turned out that way, she might have remained separate or as a pure soul. I agree to your part, but what I am trying to say is, despite I am Shuddhatma, if I would not have resolved ties with my brother, I could have remained as Shuddhatma, but not really because as long as this is disturbed and as long as this doesn't clear its path, the Shuddharma cannot stand alone. That's what I'm trying to say. That's what I here also say. On one side, the relative has to be purified and harmonious and balanced. Then only I can stay in Shuddharma all the time very well. Otherwise, I do get disturbed because Shuddharma is not a constant state of being. It is a state of reflective consciousness or pure consciousness, Chitta, which stays here or there. As long as Chitta is disturbed by some mistakes or some untoward ties in this part of being, you cannot really stay as Shuddhatma very well. So both has to go hand in hand. Yes, if there is no mistake on my part, if I have cleared everything, I am pretty sure, and if something is happening, I will remember I am Shuddhatma, that's fine. 
Yeah. So, so how do you constantly keep in touch with Siddhartha Swami? 24-7? No, 24-7. I say like as soon as you miss it, Siddhartha is not there, then you get disturbed naturally. No, yeah, very good. Another very good, very good situation. I'll, 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 I'll answer everything. Suppose, what happened? Suppose I'm at the airport. Deepak Anandji was at the airport three days, day before yesterday, and rather than morning flight, the flight left in the evening. All 12 hours he was tossing to and fro from one counter to another counter. So in this situation, what happens is, the number one, either my mind, body, speech can remain harmonious with someone that's like, or it can get upset. Now on second side, my awareness tells me I'm Shuddha So it sees this remaining harmonious or gets getting upset either way because this is occurring with this. Whenever this is getting upset, the Pragna Shakti, uh, enlightened wisdom, tries to settle it with some or other supporting knowledge. And I know that this has been settled or not settled, and uh, I try to remain a Shuddhatma. Now, the question that 24 into 7, how, can, how one can remain in Shuddhatma? Very beautiful question. So, Shuddhatma has three layers or three strata. One is conviction. So under no circumstances my conviction gets broken that by real viewpoint I am Shuddhartha. Though I may not be uh, stable with that, I may be engrossed in that, I may be entangled or in the disturbances, but my conviction does tell that by real viewpoint I am Shuddhartha and at the moment I am entangled into relative upsets or something. Second thing, my awareness always tries to bring me back as soon as possible. So it tries to keep me out and when I go to second, my Laksa remains that, okay, Shailesh is getting disturbed, I am Shuddhatma. That's state better than the conviction, higher than. And when I am still more aware, and I am little more in Purushar, I really remain a Shuddhatma, actually seeing what is happening to this. So Shuddhatma state dwells between the three. Conviction, Laksa, that is awareness of the same and experience of being stabilized into that. So between the three, three of these, it is continuously moving. Till, till we, we reach the ultimate. So in the current life right now, because of karmic, it could be disturbed up and down. Yes. Right? Yes. Because that's my personal experience I'm asking. Yes. That's the reason I ask the question. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, yes. It, it, see, despite doing everything, this ocean of mind, body, speech may have ups and downs. But the first thing, as long as I have conviction that I'm pure soul self, I'm away from this, I'm separate from this, Sooner or later, I'll get away from the effects. It is as if I'm standing on a seashore, big tides and tides and other things are coming. If I'm away, watching, I'm enjoying. If I go in, I'll get this. So it's not as easy, but my conviction is there, so it keeps me away, and awareness takes, tries to take me away. I'll give you another beautiful example. Just this is not about disturbance, but after having this introduction to holistic science, I was studying my medicine. So as soon as I enter the hall, before the examiner gives the paper, I have the awareness I am pure soul self. Shailesh give the examination quietly with full mood. Then the paper comes three hours, I am in the writing. I cannot remain as Shuddhatma distinctly. That it remains only in conviction. But as soon as the three hours paper is over, I can get back to I am pure soul self. Shailesh, let's go to hostel. Similar thing happens with the surgery. Before surgery, I can remain well off. During surgery, I cannot because my whole concentration has to be in the surgery. But as soon as the surgery is over, I again go back. That's more than enough. See, most important part of the story, again it goes back and back to presentation. As long as I'm name bearer and doer, the energy of the pure soul gets converted and keeps on charging new atoms and molecules. So new karmic bonds are being invited or that bondage is keep on continuing in awakened state or in the sleep also. Once my belief wire has gone to conviction and pure soul self and I am not doer, even though I am not aware 24 into 7, at least my belief doesn't change can I am and I am doer. So it stops the new influx of karmic bonds to a large extent, over and above giving up blissful state of being. And then third, the prajna keeps on warning you, trying to keep you back always. That depends on your determination and pusha. That's a part of Purushat you have to exercise within how you stay using this vision in different phases of mind, body and speech which comes along. And let me tell you, I have seen many as a doctor, 
I happen to see many patients in critical illness, in the time of death, and people are remaining very good. Because the major the difficulty coming in the mind, body, speech part, and you tend to go back to your Shuddharpa because now you don't have anything to stay over here. If your house is fire on fire, you don't stay in house, you go away. <laughs> Similarly, when some major difficulty comes, people move to Am Shuddharpa and they have a very peaceful exit from this body. There are n number of examples. So this is how it works. But 24 into 7, it cannot be in the same state of being. But it doesn't go below the conviction that I am pure soul self and then it migrates between the uh, Laksha and the Anuva. So these are the three states. That's what is it. Okay. So should we go for experiment? Yes. What, yes. what, is the, what everybody wants. <laughs> if everybody doesn't want, I'm fine. I don't want you to push into experiment. There was input from another seminar that please go for some practical things. So that's why I was just asking you all, wondering how we have kept it there. If you don't wish, we are fine. If you wish, we can go with that. Are we going to have some questions for Dr. Bell? Yeah. If you give me 10 minutes, because then the experiment cannot be done. And we have still time up to 4.30. So you will have enough time to ask questions and we are going to have the questions panel certainly. So can we take 10 minutes for practical experiment? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. So what we will do is, just we will say to ourselves that as a pure self, I have come to know that I am separate of mind, body, speech, name and name belonging attachments and all the things occurring within, including karmic bonds. So please give me the strength to remain as a knower and seer of whatever is happening within. What, to whatever extent we can. I don't say it will be absolute, but it will be a good beginning. And during that time, second my prayer or second my would be, if anything comes to me as a part of guilt, whether I have done something wrong to somebody or somebody has done th something wrong to me, especially the near dear ones, which keeps on coming to my memory, I do also want to do the confession, apology and resolution, and there my body speak will do it, and I'll just know whether he has done it or not done it, okay? Am I clear? Yes. My knowing, seeing part will just keep on knowing, seeing what is going on within, good, bad, don't, don't go into good, bad, anything. Let it just see as if passing and wherever we feel that, okay, I have the bad memories about Rajini Bhai or my brother or my mother or whatever, I can just see the pure self in them, just try to clean that up. This is just to get introduced into the very useful practice and it may help you throughout your life, wherever you need it. And I would say, if you can devote time 10, 15 minutes, as and when possible, this will take you a very, very long way from within. From within you will start opening out, the clouds will start dispersing out. From within your pure self light will go on increasing and you yourself will perceive and experience a lot many things, which I am telling right now. It will come your own way. Okay? So we'll do that, I'm just, uh, uh, we are praying and then 10 minutes only and then we will again go back to questions. I know that it is difficult to sit with closed eyes 10 minutes but it will be a very fruitful thing. <laughs> mm -hmm. O Supreme Self, O, o, Supreme self, self. o Pure Self, o pure self. self. Give me the inner strength to be with my real nature as knower and seer of whatever is happening at the relative inner self level. Please give me the strength to clean up whatever bad memories I have by confession, apology, and resolution. O Supreme Self, O Pure Self seated within me, give me the inner strength to be with my real nature as knower and seer of whatever is happening within the relative self. It is just to be known and seen. And I am the knower and seer. 
along with give me the inner strength to do the confession, apology and resolution for all my misdeeds with my near and dear ones or for whom I am having the bad memory. 